Magical doula, mega la boola, bibbidi bobbidi boo. That's what Diana, the boss, Ross, will always give. Put it together and what do you got? Bibbidi bobbidi boo. <laughs> bugs hello there bellas if you have not already done so please remember to like share to facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com for these super fly shades and if you're not already a part of this book club please hit the patreon link below and or the join button here on the youtube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets it if the youtube gets it now let's continue talking about inside my life by Smokey Robinson. It was nine in the morning and I was cruising, kicking the last leg of my four mile run down El Vado. It was one of those rare, clear LA mornings when you could breathe. Hey, Smoke. I stopped. It was Diana Ross coming out to pick up the newspaper from the front porch. She lived only five blocks from me. Hey, baby, what's happening? I asked her. Isn't this something, Smoke? We grew up down the street from each other, and here we are again, down the street from each other. Yeah, girl, you still following me around? She laughed and gave me a big smile, dressed in a robe and slippers. Diane looked very much like the average housewife in the morning. What are you doing up this morning, girl? Shoot, man, I'm a mama now. I've got to get up. My kids are already yelling for breakfast. They do change our lives, don't they? Did you know Barry's thinking about doing another film with me, Smoke? He's already got someone started on the script. Is that the mahogany thing he was telling me about? That's it. So much is happening right now. The kids, this movie, designing costumes, recording a new album, and on top of everything, I've been rehearsing night and day because I opened in Vegas in a week. It sure would be good if you could be there, Smoke. The curtain opened and walking down a stairway in the middle of the orchestra, dressed in a floor-length white mink coat, dazzling diamonds dripping from her ears, diamonds wrapped around her wrists. Diana Ross did not look like the average housewife. Not that day. Let me tell you something what the boss will always give you. Mag magnificence okay. magical doula mega la boola bibbidi bobbidi boo that's what diana the boss ross will always give put it together and what do you got bibbidi bobbidi boo the caesar's palace audience went wild it's the boss. Why not? The Caesars Palace audience went wild. The show was a smash. I was at a booth with Barry, Marvin Gaye, and Johnny Bristol. Diana did her reach out and touch routine where she walked through the audience and invited her fans to sing. She came to our booth and had Marvin, myself, and Johnny each sing a chorus. The crowd loved it. Her closing number was Ain't No Mountain High Enough my bucket list you know i was supposed to go to vegas to see donna ross but then covid fucking happened okay covid destroyed my dreams but it's still on the bucket list y'all ain't no mountain high enough baby to keep me from you it's a couple of things on my bucket list that i must do and seeing the boss on stage in vegas is one of them my, it was a gift for my wife. Listen, I, if I got to pay $1,000 to sit there and have that lady see me cry in her face, then that's what's going to happen. Why not? You bitches pay two, three thousand, four hundred million dollars to see the Beyonce. I know you know this song, she said. Get on up here. 
You two smoke, you two Johnny, we killed it. Afterwards, in her dressing room, we had a ball. Dad was glowing because his let's get it on had gone through the roof. It was one of those rare times he seemed happy to be in show business. Diana was glowing because her solo career was outshining her success with the Supremes. Murray was glowing because he always glows when one of his students excels. I was glowing because I'd had a ball at the show and better yet the miracles were surviving without me. Their do it baby was going to number one and best of all my golf game was improving. That be killing me. Man y'all be serious about that golf. Back in LA my second solo album Pure Smokey had been released. I liked it. Like the song I'd written called The Love Between Me and My Kids. Like the tunes I'd done with Marv Tarplin and Sister Rose Ella, but still didn't have a connecting chord. I was still searching for a new concept. I'd been the executive producer of the Miracle's first album without me. I still couldn't totally break the tie and in that capacity had taken them to a television studio to do Soul Train, the dance show. On my way out, one of the dancers, a young woman approached me, stopped me dead in my tracks. It was something like when uh, as a child, I had seen Marva Jean, my first day of kindergarten. I was suddenly viewing pure blinding beauty. Mr. Robinson, she said, my name's Meta and I'd like to start a local fan club for you. Entertainers like being adored, or else I suppose they wouldn't be entertainers. I'm no different. I'm susceptible, yet I've never liked groupies. Meta was no groupie. She was a genuine fan who knew my music better than me. She spoke sincerely and intelligently. I also couldn't help but notice her body, a dancer's body, which top to bottom was shaped like a sculpture a work of art. She had big hazel eyes, a creamy mulatto complexion, and a perky, persistent personality. I'm gonna have to Google this meta. Who the hell is this lady? On top of that, I'm gonna have to Google the, the Playboy Bunny. Will it be all right if I call you, she asked. You can call my office, I answered, giving her the number. She called persistently and just as persistently I'd avoided speaking to her. Let me tell you something, Paul. One thing about me, when I'm in a relationship, I am vicious with it because I know that if you catch me at the right time, baby, you may get a reaction. So I don't even look left or right when I'm in a relationship with somebody. Because I know one day that mother's going to make me mad. And if you catch me on the right day. So I understand what Smokey is trying to do at this point. He don't want to look at that bitch. He don't want to look at her in her eyes. Because he might fall in love. She called persistently. And just as persistently I'd avoided speaking to her. At the same time I hadn't forgotten her shape and her smile were fixed in my mind. But knowing myself, I knew it best to avoid temptation. Today, though, I figured, why not? Mm -mm -mm. Hey, Meta, you're talking to me, she said in an especially sweet voice. I'm shocked. What have you been doing, I asked. I have a job working with handicapped children. For some reason, I didn't believe her and told her so. Why don't you believe me? You seem too young. I just celebrated my 21st birthday. Still don't believe you. Call the agency. Ask for me. I did. Call the social services agency and sure enough, Meta had a job there. She told me the truth. Look, she Look. said, let's just have lunch. You want me to pick you up? I asked. It won't be necessary. I have my own car. Let's meet somewhere. We met. And if anything, she appeared more beautiful than I'd remember I knew what was happening, but I couldn't, I didn't stop myself. See what I mean? What you do is when you see a beautiful woman, you just keep going. I Don't even look at her. Okay. Because one day your wife may piss you off or may not give you some vagina that day. And the fact that something beautifully shapely and spectacular says hello to you, that just may be the day to catch your ass. 
so don't do it. Months went by, we started meeting often and soon it became more than a powerful physical relationship, i.e. he gonna. I felt myself falling, confused by the feelings I had for Meta and the devotion and affection I still felt for Claudette. Poor Miss Claudette. Poor Miss Claudette. God damn, Miss Claudette. Damn. I was in love with Claudette, but had I also fallen in love with Meta? In raw times, as Daddy Five would say, I'd simply had them both without worry or guilt. That's man's nature. But these were the years of women's liberation. And as a woman lover, I saw attitudes changing. You ain't see women saying that uh, they don't mind being a part of a harem. That ain't what you were seeing, Smokey. Meta was the sort of companion like Candy, like Claudette, who was not only smart, but compassionate, kind-hearted, a real friend. Musically, she'd encourage me, offering candid critiques of my compositions. I also thought she was honest until one day she shocked me with a piece of news. This bullshit right here, y'all. In the morning, I played the last round of the music industry golf tournament in Palm Springs, a three-day affair. Now, after an amorous afternoon, Meta and I were heading home. Ain't this some bullshit? All the celebrity friends. He taking his whole round. All his celebrity friends. Ooh, Miss Claudette. The sun was setting and a gentle desert breeze blowing sweetly. What a moment for lovers. I reached out for Meta's hand when I saw tears in her eyes. What's wrong, I asked. Why is all these damn planes out here today? What's wrong, I asked. Oh, nothing. You can't be crying for nothing, honey. She sighed. I kept prodding, probing, trying to find out the source of the sadness. Finally, she said, look, GE. She called me Green Eyes or GE. There's something I have to tell you. Oh God, I thought to myself, she knows I'm never leaving Claudette. So she's found another guy. Ain't ninjas a trip? Men are nuts. You got a whole wife over there and you and your feelings if she moves on and find somebody else. Uh, I mean, let me stop it because I've been in that situation before myself. I told you I am not perfect. I haven't been entirely truthful with you, she confessed. My heart sank. I lied to you, said Meta. Now here comes the ugly truth about this other guy. When did you lie, I asked. When I gave you my age, I'm not 21. I'm 18. I was shocked, but it explained many things. Why she didn't want me to come by her house. Why she didn't want me to meet her mother and family. Why she always had to be in at an early hour. I'd feel better, Meta, I said, if I could talk to your mother about it. Oh no, please don't do that. Mama would never understand. And she just might cause you trouble. That makes me feel like she ain't 18. For days, I pondered. Disturbed, I twisted and turned that night next to Claudette. Okay. And finally, knowing that I wanted Meta in my life, I decided to call her mother. I just wanted to say that if I had known your daughter's age, I told Meta's mama, I would not have dated her. Bullshit the baker. Girl, bullshit the baker. Bury Gordy, your daddy. Your, your daddy, Barry the Gordy, was dating and, and flanagan with Diana Ross when she was underage. Stop it. Stop it, Smokey. Stop it. I just wanted to say that if I had known your daughter's age, I told Meta's mama, I would not have dated her. It doesn't surprise me that Meta lied about her age, said the tough-talking woman, because when she wants something, she's very determined. But why are you calling me? Why are you telling me this? I'm not sure. It's just, you didn't have to call. I felt compelled. Feels to me like you really care about her. Look, can I come and see you? Why? I guess I'd like to explain how I feel in person. She agreed. And I met with Meta's mama, just the two of us. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, baby, I'm a country. 